Episode 47, Extracting Oil. The white tiger had white and short hair. He had bold facial features that were considered proportionate. He exuded a strong masculine scent from head to toe, making him appear very manly. The claw scar on his left face went past his eyes, narrowly avoiding the corner of his lips and reaching his jaw. One could just imagine how dangerous the scene must have been when he got injured. If he was clawed a little more to the side, he would have lost his left eye. With his murderous aura, he reminded her of a serial killer in one of those Western movies. Blair subconsciously placed her hand on Roger's arm to feel safer. This male was indeed very scary looking. Rex turned his head towards the female fox and strode towards her. He asked, Can you let me be your male? His voice was deep and rich like a tiger, clearly articulating each and every word, but he seemed rather nervous. It was silence below the stage, and only their breathing sounds could be heard. Under such an atmosphere, Blair also started feeling nervous. She bit her fingers and thought to herself, Say yes, say yes. The five females standing in a line were frozen. The fox female was now shaking even more badly. When Rex finished speaking, she suddenly wailed loudly and hid behind the other females. I don't want to. Don't come any closer. The female started sobbing. All sorts of animal growls and howls could be heard from below the stage. All of them were defending the female who had been frightened to tears. Rex remained where he was with his tall and muscular back to everyone. Blair smacked her forehead. So awkward. That female fox was truly an iron fist in a velvet glove. It was so cruel of her to not spare the tiger any face in front of all the other beastmen. If she were in her shoes, she would choose to tell him privately to save him some pride. Not only did the white tiger suffer a loss of face, but he now also became the target of scorn. Blair didn't like this female. Then just forget about it. Blair heard this from the stage. The white tiger male then turned around, his face expressionless, as though he wasn't at all affected. With an arch of his body, he transformed into a white tiger and jumped down the stone platform. The beast men automatically cleared a path for him, and he bolted off. Pretty straightforward. The fox female gradually calmed down under the comforting words of a male beast man. Roger said, I was right, wasn't I? Nobody wants him, even though he has four animal stripes. Blair said, That's all because you males have indulged the females too much. If I give birth to a daughter, I definitely won't raise her to behave like this. What's a daughter? Roger asked. Stephen also glanced over with a questioning look. It was only then that Blair realized what she had just said. Face blushing, she explained, It's a female offspring, Roger declared excitedly. I'll surely be able to make you conceive a female. Stephen flicked out his tongue dangerously, and Roger instantly shut up. Next up were the duels. The beast men climbed onto the stone platform one after the other, battling it out with their opponents. Blair shoved at Roger and said jokingly, Do you want to go up there and try? Roger glared at Blair fiercely. I'm a male with a female. Try what? Stephen suddenly sent someone staring at him and gazed over warily. The ape king instantly lowered his eyes to conceal the emotions within four-striped feral beast actually came here. What was more, he was sharing a female with the descendant of the Leopard King. The duel on stage started to become more and more ferocious, and cries of agony were constantly heard with blood splattering everywhere. Blair didn't dare look anymore, so she said to Roger, let's go back. Okay, Roger said. With a sweep of his tail, the beast men quickly cleared a path for Stephen. When they got home, Blair's mind was still filled with those gory battle scenes. Her face looked pretty pale. 
With his arms around Blair, Roger rubbed his face against her. Shall I cook something for you to eat? Blair rolled her eyes at him. I've just eaten. With rice, I can just eat two meals a day. There's no need to cook at noon again. Rice again? Roger felt jealous. Now that there was rice, Blair's appetite had doubled. I'll go and chop firewood, Roger said. He picked up his axe from the ground. Seeing that Stephen had no intention to go with him, he said in a displeased tone, Hey, Snake, come with me. Don't dream of staying alone with Blair. Stephen glanced coldly at Roger, the message clear from his eyes. Asking for a beating? Roger's heart quivered a little. Blair quickly tried to ease the situation. I'm thinking of arranging the firewood we have here. Give me a hand, Stephen. Roger had no choice but to consent. Holding the axe in hand, he left by himself. The twigs and branches took up a lot of space. Blair thus thought of an idea, to extract the oil. Not only would it occupy much less space, but it would also be a breeze to cook with. There was plenty of bamboo around the house, and they were most ideal for containing the oil. Stephen, help me carry the firewood down, Blair said with her eyes upon the pile of tree branches. Okay. Stephen curled his tail and rolled down a bundle of tree branches. Blair bent down and tried to untie the vines binding the tree branches, but she lost patience after failing some attempts to do so and decided to simply snap the vines by brute force. Suddenly, she felt something tighten around her ankle, and she could feel her body filled with strength. She was about to tug by force when a cold hand grabbed her hand. Do you wish to faint again like last time? Stephen asked. What? Blair looked up at Stephen dazed. She suddenly recalled that on the day Stephen arrived, she had experienced an explosion in strength which allowed her to snap the tree branches easily. But very soon her body collapsed and remained unconscious for a good while after that. At that time, she had thought it was because her body hadn't fully recovered, so she didn't pay much heed to that. Could that have something to do with this? How did you know that? Blair was bewildered. She felt a tightening sensation at her ankle, and something suddenly struck her. Does it have something to do with you? Stephen stroked Blair's head and said gently, This is the protection I provide to you after we become mates so that you can save your skin at critical moments. But I'm too strong, so you weren't able to take it. That's why you fainted. Blair's lips parted. No wonder. No wonder she kept feeling an urge to curl her arms around a tree branch and ferociously snap it. Just like how a snake behaved. Do all males bestow such a strength upon their females upon becoming mates with them? The more loving the relationship between the mates, the more completely that power is unleashed, Stephen said. Blair's heart started pounding wildly. Did that mean she could become very strong? However, Stephen immediately splashed cold water on her idea. Try your best not to use such powers. It's going to make you collapse from exhaustion. Only use it when you need to save your own life. The two of them arranged the willow branches into clean rods, washed them, and left them aside to dry. After Roger returned, Blair asked Stephen to get some firewood, and also asked Roger to find her two rocks and shape them according to her instructions. She wanted one long rock and one round rock. A trough was cut in the middle of the long rock for the tree branches to be placed. As for the round rock, its side was polished such that its width fit nicely into the trough. There was a hole through the center, and a piece of wood was placed through that hole. This would act as a shaft. Staring at the weird-looking stones, Roger asked, Blair, why exactly did you ask me to make this? Blair picked up a clean willow branch and smiled at Roger with her brow raised. 
I have my reasons. Come and give me a hand. She placed the willow branch into the trough, then asked the confused Roger to place the round stone onto it. The heavy stone instantly flattened the firewood, and a green-colored oil was forced out of it, wetting the wood trough. Roger widened his leopard eyes. Blair was overjoyed. <gasps> I've succeeded! She had come up with this idea by referencing a sugarcane juice machine. Before she completed it, she couldn't be certain it would work either. After all, the sugarcane had much higher water content than tree branches, and it was also much less tough. Hence, she didn't know if she could squeeze the liquid out of the tree branches. Thankfully, the stone was heavy enough and managed to flatten the tree branches. The two of them excitedly rolled the round stone to crush the tree branch. The oil slowly dripped out of the tree branches through the trough and finally into the stone basin. When Stephen returned, the two of them had already extracted a basin full of oil. There was much less firewood in the house now. Instead, there was now a pile of firewood residue outside. He glanced at Blair in surprise, then set down the firewood and went out again. There was a high level of water content in this oil. Given time to settle down, the oil would be separated from the water. As oil was lighter than water, there was now a thick layer of green oil on top. Blair scooped out the oil using a stone bowl. When she was done scooping out the oil, the stone basin was more than half filled with green-colored water. With so much water in this, it was little wonder that every time it was dripped into the pot, it resulted in splattering. The more Roger looked, the more impressed he felt. He poured the pure oil into a piece of bamboo and sealed it, a look of disbelief in his eyes. He said with a sigh, Hey, beast men are indeed intelligent. Of course, she shrugged her shoulders and said with a smile, Plus, I'm a foodie. Most importantly, she came from the modern age and had more knowledge. After Roger learned how to do it, he refused to let Blair do it herself. He and Stephen were kept busy for half a day before they managed to fill it with firewood and extract several buckets of oil. That was enough oil to use for quite a while. As the temperature dropped, fog started appearing in the skies. Blair started to feel hungry. It was then that she recalled that Roger hadn't yet hunted today. Hungry? Stephen circled his arms around her waist, laying his hands over her petite hand that was placed over her tummy. The warm temperature made him sigh affectionately. As his lips were pressed against Blair's ear, a cool breath floated into Blair's ear alongside his voice. I'll go and cook rice. Blair shrunk her neck uneasily and didn't reply. She then heard Roger say, No need. There's a bonfire banquet tonight. Let's go and eat free food. Bonfire banquet? We can join in as well? Blair recalled the ape king extending an invitation to the white tiger, but the three of them were just ordinary people. Would they be allowed to join in too? Roger said, All females are allowed to join in. As your mates, we certainly would accompany you. What about single males? Blair felt that they probably wouldn't be allowed to, else the ape king wouldn't have specially invited the white tiger. The royalty can. Males invited by females can as well. A disgusted look flashed across Roger's face as the tiger female Tanya came to mind. Blair noticed Roger's quick change in expression. Recalling that Roger had been framed at a gathering once, she understood why he looked this way. Don't be mad. It's not worth ruining your health from being angry at her, Blair said as she patted Roger on the shoulder. If we go, we're going to bump into her again. Roger sounded irritated, but the annoyance greatly dissipated after Blair consoled him. It's about time. Let's go. Roger pulled Blair with him, and Stephen followed. 